Chris Novak Djokovic's legal team have filed another appeal against the cancellation of his Australian visa. This is after his visa was cancelled again, which means the Serbian stands to miss the Australian Open that starts this Monday. Could the Novak saga be a watershed moment in terms of sport and COVID-19 protocols? Well, to help us answer that question, we are joined via Zoom by CEO of ProfMed Medical Scheme, Craig Comrie. A very good afternoon, Mr. Craig. Thanks for taking the time to chat to us. Let's start here. Where do we draw the line between an individual's human rights being violated and them crossing the line uh, with the laws of a country? Well, it's a, it's a difficult balance that we're all going to have to get to. We've seen both from a Ned Black perspective and even from our own president that this is a balance we're going to reach. Some of this has to land up in a constitutional um, judgment where, where we'll actually get better direction. But in the, in the case of Djokovic and Australia, it really is interesting that the Australians are doing everything they can to protect their citizens. We've seen what one infection or 100 infections can do to a country. And I guess they're doing... Um, they expressing strong leadership in terms of, of vaccine mandates. So as we look at sport and business in general, we can only see a future where vaccine mandates actually come into play to protect those individuals and the rights of others. All right. I mean, vaccine passports seem to be the obvious way to go in terms of making visits mandatory. What is your expert opinion on this? Yeah, I'd agree. Absolutely. We need to be able to incentivize people to get the vaccine. There's no doubt that if you look at the evidence clearly and you listen to the scientists in the field, that vaccines actually halves um, transmission of the disease and those that have been vaccinated have high levels of immunity. And if we are going to prevent future um, variants coming through, we actually need to make sure that the country is vaccinated. So and we see different countries and different approaches in terms of either incentivize the use of vaccines and sport provides a wonderful avenue for us to actually get that right. So if we want to see stadiums full, we really need to get more people vaccinated. All right. So speaking about stadiums being full, I mean, in particular in South Africa, we haven't had sports in stadiums for the last three years. I mean, of course, in the rest of the world, we've already seen that sports has returned. But that's not the notion here in South Africa. What do you think the problem is regarding that, Mr. Comrie? Well, we've seen the different waves actually come through. And as long as the waves still show those high levels of infection, we cannot see large gatherings. And that includes sporting events um, and other type of uh, entertainment uh, events as well. So what we really have to see is the flattening of those waves into the future. And uh, unless you can keep the immunity up against the, the COVID virus and the different types of variants, um, we won't see the return to those filled up stadiums. I mean, who wants to not see Djokovic and Nadal play in the in the Australian Open or even the pro tiers uh, win a series against India like they have. I mean, thinking about it, Mr. Comrie, the WHO this week had released figures of infection rates, um, you know, flattening in certain countries, Australia being one of them, uh, you know, linking that to the Novak Djokovic saga. Is this enough to motivate uh, for the easing of health measures in countries where the numbers can be controllable? Yeah, I think if the risks are controllable, and it's always a good question in terms of what that controllable level is, but I think even the WHO references a 5% um, infection rate, and South Africa is still sitting close to 14% at the moment. So unless we can bring those infection rates down, um, we can't see future lockdowns being off the cards completely. And we say this even not understanding what future variants may bring. I think uh, Omicron has actually been the, the one variant that's been less severe, but lots of transmission. So we need both of those indicators, both um, hospital admissions, transmission and infection rates to come down while we need to see vaccination rates actually kick up. Um, even in those overseas countries, we see vaccination rates of over 70 or 80 percent. Um, we're still sitting uh, close to the 30 percent mark. And so if we want to have um, open sports events and, and a big stadium full of people, then we really need to bring those, those rates up to the 70 or 80 percent mark. And perhaps then we'd be more secure and we can avoid the risk of uh, the spreading of COVID as well. 
let's add this factor to the conversation. I mean, especially in the conversation of sponsorship, um, if we add this to the, to the discussion, does that make the pandemic's impact on sports perhaps more complicated than other sectors, Mr. Comrie? Well, sports has a way of bringing us together. So if we want to be together, we have to do so in, a, in an environment that is risk-free of being infected. Um, and so those risks always will have to be balanced. And the only way we can balance those other than the normal um, uh, safety protocols that we already have in place is the vaccinating. Uh, and that will start bringing that risk down to a minimal space where we then can actually meet together and enjoy those events. I mean, can you give us a timeline of when we can expect the first uh, a step of action to be taken by government and those involved in making sure that, uh, you know, when fans return to stadiums or massive entertainment venues, that it will be at a very low health risk uh, uh, kind of action that will be taken uh, towards that, Mr. Comrie? Yeah, that's going to be a very interesting question. But if the WHO is using that 5% infection rate, um, I would suspect that it'll have to be significantly lower than that. So the infection rates are going to have to be sitting around 2.5%. And we still are going to have to make sure that everybody's vaccinated, um, that we exercise in um, social distancing in those environments. So I think the full stadiums are probably still a good few years off before we get there. But I do see room uh, probably within the next year or two for us to start um, having occupancy levels higher than the 2,000 we, we restricted to at the moment. I mean, let's think about this. Is it necessary to implement a rule for prominent sports figures so that star power never interferes with the law? Yeah, look, the star power brings um, the people, brings the, the money as well. So I really think you, you want to get the stars in front of the screens and you want to get the people in the stadiums to, to witness those events. Um, I think the balance is always going to be trying to risk those that actually, I mean, think of the, the sports guys, they're all sitting in bubbles for months on end as they play their sport. Um, what you don't want to do is, is bring um, the, the COVID risk to them. And if there are irresponsible sports people that aren't being vaccinated and aren't exercising proper um, safety measures, you don't want to bring those viruses into uh, the people around them to be exposed. So I think of the hotels, um, uh, uh, people at the gates at the sporting events, uh, think of the tennis ball, ball boys and girls that look after that. All of that needs to be in a perfect bubble. And there's huge efforts and money spent on getting that right at the moment. So if the, if the virus subsides, we have higher vaccination rates, um, and the two are, are connected, perhaps in the opposite way, we need to actually get this thing um, sorted in terms of, of, of then protecting both players Fam their families and then the spectators as well.